it's Alice and I am here today with a bumper double episode of Book Chat. So quite appropriately the filming of Book Chat episode 13 was completely derailed because I was getting ready to go and see Taylor Swift um, which ended up being a bit of a catastrophic day. Like, we missed the beginning of the set because we had a lot of car troubles and we're now relying on buses to get us all around so there's a lot of time consuming stuff going on at the moment but it's calming down a little bit now we've got our anniversary out of the way we've got father's day out of the way so hopefully next week's book chat will be back to a regular schedule thankfully not much got announced this week but there was a lot of stuff that was announced last week so what i'm going to do is instead of splitting it into both weeks i'm going to do it like company by company and then just a whole huge slew of cover reveals at the end because there's been a ridiculous amount of cover reveals in the last two weeks so please bear with me as we run through all of this and I hope that you enjoy this video. So first up we'll start off with Fairy Loot who have announced a few special editions and a couple of sets that are being put on sale over the next few weeks. First up they announced an edition of The Stars Too Fondly by Emily Hamilton. This is going on sale on July 17th. Once again these are the general sale dates so if you are a subscriber then you will get an early sale. Um, just always make sure to check the original announcement posts to be able to get all of the specific details for those because if I broke it down with the pre-sales and all of the timestamps this video would be seven hours long. I will be honest I hadn't heard of this book at all until it was announced and it is beautiful like it looks like a really stunning edition but we're just not in the position at the moment where we can buy books that just look good and we haven't heard of so I will be skipping this one. Next up on July 26th they've announced the editions of the Hades and Persephone set by Scarlet St. Clair. Again these are ones that I will be skipping but that's because I've got the first couple of books in this series in the original paperbacks and I really like the covers on those. I'm not a huge fan of this trend of doing like romance books with the characters on the covers because it just doesn't really seem to fit the theme for me um, but I'm sure a lot of people will absolutely love these and they do look very beautiful they're just not to my taste. And last up on July 31st they've announced that they're releasing a series of The Young Elites by Marie Lu. This is the second Marie Lu series that they featured following the Legend series that they did a couple of years back. These I'm tempted by because I do have the Legend books and I do have the paperbacks of this series but I've never gotten around to reading them. But because I have the paperbacks and I haven't read them yet I think it's probably best for me to skip these. It is in two paydays time. So we'll wait and see what funds are looking like then, if the car is fixed, how I'm feeling, if I even remember because I think I'm going to be on holiday with my kids when this goes on sale. So the likelihood is this is going to be in the no-no zone. Um, but we will wait and see and I'll probably update you closer to the time on that one. They also did three aesthetic reels this week. So they put up the YA, the Romanticy and the Adult Aesthetic Reels for August. I had literally no idea for any of these so I am purely going off of Autumn Book Reads guesses on Instagram so as normal if you are interested in getting any kind of spoilers or hints towards what might be featured in upcoming boxes then I definitely recommend checking out Autumn's Instagram, I'll make sure to link that down below. For YA, Autumn thinks it's going to be The Girl With No Reflection by Ketty Chow. For Romanticy, Bonded By Thorns by Elizabeth Helen. And for adult, Long Live Evil by Sarah Rees Brennan. The only one of these authors that I've heard of is Sarah Rees Brennan um, and I've only ever heard of her YA stuff so I'm interested to see what they end up doing with these editions if Autumn's predictions end up being correct um, but I'll be able to let you know once the theme reveals are officially here which should be over the next couple of weeks. There's also been an update to the Maple Hills set by Hannah Grace so this is the Icebreaker and Wildfire set that Fairy Loot did a couple of months ago. There have been a lot of worried people commenting on social media because they've noticed that a lot of people who didn't order the set have been reporting that they received it. Turns out there was a labelling mishap in the warehouse so the wrong sets have been sent out to the wrong people. Fairy Loot have emailed customers directly who have been affected by this and they have said that they are working with the publisher and will hopefully be able to get something sorted soon. Um, I'll give you any more updates that I see on this as they appear um, but unfortunately I didn't order this set so I am just going off the second hand information for these ones so if you end up getting any information and I don't mention it then please just feel free to like tweet me or put it down in the comments and then I can feature it in the next episode of Book Chat. That's everything for Fairy Loot. 
And for Illumicrate, we've actually only got a couple of pieces of Afterlight news this week. Quite similarly to Fairy Loot, they had a mishap in their warehouse and the copies of Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood ended up arriving into their warehouse without the digital signature. Instead of holding up the shipping and getting those resent with the digital signature included, they're actually including digitally signed book plates with the orders. They have given any affected customers the opportunity to get a refund if they want one. So if you are somebody who's getting this set and you're not interested in having them because of this difference in the description, then feel free to reach out to them. I don't know when the kind of cutoff point is for that, but as far as I'm aware, this email has only been sent out over the last couple of days. They also announced their edition of Twelfth Night by Alexandra Farrell Falmouth, which is the name of Olivia Blake. I believe it's her actual given name, um, and Olivia Blake is her pen name, but this is a YA romance that looks like it's about Camelot in some way. I've got a feeling they're doing some kind of LARPing thing, but I will be honest, I read the blurb for this one the day it was announced, added it to my Goodreads TBR and then was like, I'll just wait until closer to the time to see about that one. Um, but I really, really love my mechanical romance. And I, as somebody who hasn't enjoyed the majority of the Olivia Blake books that I read, um, I'm surprised that I actually love that one as much as I did. But it does mean I'm really excited for Twelfth Night and I am tempted to see if this gets to general sale and see if I can get a copy. I'm hoping it means that they might end up doing my mechanical romance because that would be really awesome to have on my shelf because that is a great way a contemporary. That one's going on general sale on the 11th of July if it makes it that far because I can imagine that one's going to be pretty popular with the subscribers. Next up we have massive news from Owlcrate who have announced that they are starting four new subscriptions next year. Um, they're quarterly subscriptions so there's going to be a romance, a romanticy, a horror and a sci-fi subscription. As it stands the shared month between the boxes will be the horror and the sci-fi. So they've done it that you can buy like a ticket to guarantee you a spot in the subscription when it opens but you can also just join a waitlist if you're not happy to buy a ticket just yet from what I can gather. I will be honest I am not going to be getting any of these. It's actually making me think that for me personally it might be time for me to just drop Alcrate completely because shipping from the US to the UK with these book boxes is very expensive. It's worth it for me at the moment because I do utilise the skips on Owlcrate quite regularly. So if they're doing the same book as say Fairy Loot or if it's something that I've already got pre-ordered from Waterstones then I'll skip that month's Owlcrate um, and then I can save myself a bit of money. But these new subscriptions aren't skippable. So if you want to skip a month you have to quit the subscription and then rejoin the waitlist. They've basically said that this is because they have to order a certain amount of each of the titles but I think that seems a bit strange because of the fact that they do do unlimited skips on the YA box and the adult box that are currently available. I'm wondering if this might mean that they might be doing away with skips entirely in the future and if they do then that is definitely it for me. But it is also making me think that if they've got another four boxes that they're now trying to cater to, there's no guarantee that the best possible picks will be going into like the adult fancy box or the YA box. Um, it might be a case that some of the picks that would have featured in those will feed off into these other subscriptions and then they might be better and then I'll suffer with all of the FOMO and I feel like I've got two options here and it's either subscribe to all six and completely bankrupt myself or just cut ties. I'll let you know closer to the time what I do end up deciding to do because it is like not starting until 2025 and I have already decided that I want the November 2024 YA box because I really want the um, reading journals that they do every year but even if it gets to the stage where I have to like join the waitlist just to get the November box every year I think I can probably budget for that. I'm just not sure if this is the news that I wanted to hear coming out of the Owlcrate camp but a lot of people are really over the moon about it a lot of people lining up for these buying tickets to all four of the subscriptions so I don't blame anybody for being excited about it it's just not for me particularly as an English subscriber to this US book box. Next up we have news from the Broken Binding who revealed their editions of the Greenbone Saga which will be coming in their subscription between July and September I believe. Uh, these were not well received I'm not gonna lie to you I've seen a lot of people really angry about the additions that they've done and the choices that they've made 
I'm not subscribed so I don't have skin in the game but I will say that when I was scrolling down I did see the covers and kind of go ooh interesting choice so especially considering how beautiful the original covers are and how beautiful the Illumicrate editions are there was a high high expectation for this set and I think that the character artwork that they did, although it's beautiful, it doesn't really seem like it fits the aesthetic of these books. I haven't read them myself, um, so please do let me know down in the comments if you're a subscriber or if you're a big fan of the Green Bone Saga and you think I'm wrong. But I can imagine there's a lot of people who felt as though they were going to be missing out with this one who now aren't feeling like they're missing out quite as much. So that's a good thing. Um, yeah, just an interesting choice. They also announced their edition of The Doors of Midnight by R.R. Verdi. They should have already emailed any people who purchased the previous books in this series with details of when the sale is happening. So if you are somebody who got one of the earlier books in the series from The Broken Binding, then it might be worth reaching out to them if you haven't seen that information in your inbox yet. They also announced that they're doing an edition of The Bright Sword by Lev Grossman. The general sale for this one is the 7th of July. So if you're interested in that one, you've got a few days <laughs> to try and save up some money for it. The most exciting news of the past two weeks, in my personal opinion, is the fact that the Way Book Prize 2024 shortlist was revealed. Um, I have done a whole video on that. I did a video with my predictions, then I did a video with my reaction to the shortlist reveal. So if you would like to see a little bit more about all of these books, what I think about them being on the shortlist, and then the blurbs of each of them, then please do check that video out, because that's all compacted in there nicely for you. And now it's time for the slew of cover reveals. <laughs> I've actually done these alphabetically because I am nothing if not extra. <laughs> so first up, Hot Escape have announced that they are doing reissues of the Caraval series in the Return to Caraval editions by Stephanie Garber. Um, this is going to be published on the 25th of July with a special box set coming out at the beginning of November, I think the 7th of November, once Spectacular has been released. I think that these are really gorgeous and to be honest if the box set is still available and I have enough money around that time um, I will be buying it because I feel as though even if Fairy Loot do end up doing iron editions of these I think it's going to be hard to beat how beautiful these look so I think it might just be a safer bet to grab them while I can. Next up was the cover reveal for Deep End by Ali Hazelwood. This is coming out on the 4th of February 2025. This was previously being referred to as Wet with an H. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that the title of that changed. But I also feel like I would have been way more interested in it if it had been announced with a title like that. But um, this is seems like it's some kind of competitive divers falling in love. So it's a bit of a departure from the sciencey romances that she's been doing but still very Ali Hazelwood. Both of the covers for Don't Let the Forest In by C.G. Drews, also known as Paper Fury, have been revealed. Um, so there's a US cover and a UK cover and two different publishing dates for you. So the publishing date in the US is October the 29th, while the publishing date in the UK is actually January 16th next year. So if you are a UK reader, you've got a little bit longer to wait for this one, but I think both of the covers are really stunning. Emily Wilde's Compendium of Lost Tales by Heather Fawcett also had its cover revealed this week. This one's going to be coming out in February 2025. I'll let you know when we get any edition information about the fairy loop version that's bound to exist. The cover reveal for Gentlest of Wild Things by Sarah Underwood was also done this week. That one's coming out on the 15th of August this year. Um, I'm not sure if Illumicrate are going to do an edition or not, but they did do Sarah Underwood's first book, so it might be worth keeping an eye out on their socials if you liked the first book that Sarah Underwood released. We finally got a cover for Oathbound by Tracy Dion. This is coming out on the 4th of March 2025. I'm very excited for this one. I will be honest, I thought that Legend Ball was supposed to be a duology, and then I got to the end of Blood Marked and thought well that didn't really sum everything up well what's going on here then and then I discovered there was going to be a book three so I'm hoping that this one actually gives us a bit more of an ending um but I think that the powerful cover is just so sweet to see like I love the way that these covers have gotten cooler as the series has gone along um and the series is really worth reading if you haven't picked it up yet there was also the cover reveal for The Order of Masks by Alina Bell Chambers. That one's coming out on the 10th of September. As well as Paris Celestial by A.Y. Chow, which is being published on the 23rd of January 2025. Um, I will admit I think that this one's really boring compared to the Shanghai Immortal cover. I genuinely thought it was a placeholder cover to start with. I'm hoping it looks a bit better when you see it in person. The cover of For Serpent Sea was also revealed. This is the sequel to Spice Road by Maya Ibrahim. That one's out on the 17th of September. The one I think I'm most excited about is So Thrilled For You by Holly Vaughan. This is coming out in January 2025. Um, this is an adult 
novel of Holly Bourne's, but it's by an arson at the world's worst baby shower. Sounds fascinating to me. Throne of Secrets by Kerry Maniscalco had already had its cover revealed, but the Under the Dust Jacket foiling that is exclusive on all of the um, first print hardcovers has been revealed, so I'm kind of counting that as a cover reveal just for the purpose of this section. That's coming out on the 24th of September. And last but not least, we have the UK cover reveal for Wind and Truth by Brandon Sanderson, which is coming out in December 2024. This is the last book in this arc of the Stormlight Archives, I believe. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Mm, I have a friend who talks about Brandon Sanderson a lot and I tried to take it all in but there's a lot of information and it's hard to retain it. That's it for cover reveals and I've actually only got one more book announcement for you and it's actually Victoria Schwab's V.E. Schwab's new novel. Bury Our Bones in the Midnight Soil will be coming out June 10th 2025. I've tried to avoid seeing as much information about this one as I can because I feel like I hype these titles up in my head so much that I then can't actually read them. <laughs> Addie LaRue. <laughs> um, but I think I've seen that this one's about sapphic vampires, which I'm fine with if it's true. So that's all of the news for the last two weeks. When it comes to reading, it's been a bit quiet. Um, I finished Era by Era, the Taylor Swift biography that I was reading by Caroline Maguire. I will be honest that I think this one could have done with being published after the Era's tour has finished. Um, Torture Poets Department comes across as a bit of like a little afterthought because obviously it was released so recently before the book was published. But when you consider that it's still breaking records in the UK, she's been at number one for seven weeks with the album and it's the longest number one run that she's ever had in the UK. It feels a bit ill-advised to publish a book about her life when she's still currently actively breaking records that are then obviously not going to be in there. It makes the book feel dated quite quickly. Um, I also was not a huge fan of the way that her story was told because like you're in the middle of the lover era and it like jumps forward to her and Joe breaking up and her now dating Travis and it feels like okay but we could just take time to like focus on the lover era and then talk about that aspect of things when you get to the era's tour when you obviously get to torture poets um it seems a little bit non-chronological for a book that's meant to be going era through era i did give it three and a half stars um i did enjoy it and it was very informative for the early years of taylor's career but i feel like for me as a huge fan there were little like inconsistencies within this and there was some like outright mistakes um, so it wasn't the best thing in the world. Um, and I also finished reading Five Minute Mum, um, Time for School, which is a book by the blogger Five Minute Mum, which is about um, five minute games that you can play to help your children learn their schoolwork. I gave this one five stars. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. There's so many great ideas in here and it really is going to make our summer holidays a lot easier to sprinkle these throughout. They don't take a lot of prep work, they don't take a lot of money, it's something that anybody can do and it's definitely a book that I'm going to be buying physically so that I can flick through it with my kids and we can choose which games to play together. So that's one I definitely recommend particularly if you are a parent of school aged children or if you know someone who has school aged children that you want to be able to help them out. So lots of potential there. Other than that we haven't managed to get anything else read but I'm hoping to start the way of book prize later this evening actually. Um, so I'm going to go and see if I can do that. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm Alice and this is The Bumbling Blogger. Please do let me know down in the comments if there's anything that you'd like to discuss that I've talked about in this video or if there's any other book boxes that you would like me to talk about in the future. If there's any announcements for things that I've missed, any kind of updates that have slipped through the net. And as I said, hopefully we'll be back with another episode of Book Chat next Monday. Back onto the regular scheduling but let's be honest Taylor Swift had to take priority right like I had so many bracelets to make I had so much to do I had to paint my nails I had to do my makeup I had to get ready there was no time to film <laughs> but I promise I'll make time for you next week thank you for watching bye what is wrong with me <laughs> They should have already emailed any purchases of previous books in the series about the pre-sale that is going on for this book soon. I've lost all of my words. Both of the covers for Don't Let the Forest In by C.G. Drews, also known as Paper Fury, if you are big on the book Twitter lore. I don't know what the word is, what am I saying? I'm going to start this whole section again, I think. Uh, I'm too tired for this. <laughs>